Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here and I'm back for some more yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my play of Klonoa for the Nintendo Wii, in this case in Japan, Klonoa Daughter Phantom R Remake for the Nintendo Wii of course. So, last time we did manage to completely dealt with the forms of Vision 3-1 and especially noticeable with Vision 3-2 and we did manage to beat the likes out of Grim Blong from that particular third boss of the entirety of Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle. So today for this episode is the fact that we're about to be continue on and go ahead and explore for the next vision world which appears to be vision 4-1 and eventually we're about to be exploring through vision 4-2. See if then know, as far as I'm aware about these particular these two levels are I think those will, uh, these levels will go down pretty, really damn quickly. Especially those of how the fact that, well, well, it's pretty obvious at this point because of how the fact that I'm gonna be going for the exact same collectibles as it used to be. So, even then, though, you probably expect it by this point. See, so even then, though, that I must admit, though, right away, there won't be any much, uh, news details as far as I'm aware, uh, um, I'm aware, I'm afraid, guys, just because I've already explained about. Um, some more details about the forms of other, um, stuff in mind. Although there's one thing in particular that I forgot to mention about this, and that was the forms of other fact that, well, I think I've briefly mentioned about this in Dream of Likes of In, um, what you call it, a Super Mario Party video with, uh, with, uh, Pinkie Pie and all that, and that was the fact that the reason why that Luigi's Mansion 3 doesn't get its specific release date, although I definitely understand, that uh, uh, it definitely should be coming in during the likes of in this year, but it doesn't tell us specifically for the actual final release date is it going to be. My um, speculations with that, it will be sometime during in, uh, Halloween or something like that, because it makes perfect sense, all, the, all things to be considered. But um, uh, um, somehow, unfortunately, it was currently unknown at the time, because even then, I'm really hoping that that game will not be delayed until 2020, because if it does, It'll be like Luigi's Mansion 2 all over again when it comes to the forms of like uh, confirming release dates for surely because as a result of that specific stimulations then I was so desperate to able to actually just to try out uh, the next Luigi's Mansion game for after well I usually already completed the uh, you know the first Luigi's Mansion game on the GameCube and the 3DS version well despite the hidden mansion thing I need to go through first on the 3DS version of Luigi's Mansion and also, I've also managed to completely done with Luigi's Mansion 2, so that I can able to actually fully upgrade it myself with the Poltergeist 5000 of all sorts. So, even then, I don't know exactly what else to be considered with, uh, you know, Poltergeist G, uh, 00 of any sort, because we'll find out, finding more details onto that, whenever, when, uh, it has a new release date or something, because even then, though, I was just... So desperate to be considered. Oh, looks like we got ourselves a very rare item right there, which appears to be a golden token, which basically this allows you to give you like three extra lives. So even then, that's a pretty swell reward, if you say so for myself at this point. So even then, we'll just go ahead and just, you know, explore anybody forms of the dangerous pathway to the shortcuts to the forms of the wind village, because obviously that you remember from Vision 3-2, that we managed to bump into the forms of Granny, or in this case in the Wii version, it just now calls her, uh, Chief this, as far as I'm aware for this particular stuff, and next thing notice is about the fact that Joker managed to able to hear specific details about where the Moon Pendant is, and somehow we accidentally mentioned about the forms of, uh, it was actually in Grandpa's house or something like that, or in this case, this matter, Klonoa's Grandpa, so you can end up, that's generally you get the gist of it. So even then, now it's up to able to, well, we need to head back into the Wind Village and hopefully try to able to actually stop the Joker while he's trying to take the Moon Pendant away from us before it's too late. So, but obviously it's exactly the same thing for how it does it on the PlayStation version, so not much anything else uh, different about it, apart from the fact that, well, you'll see why in just a moment, and so whenever we get to the very end of uh, version 4-2, which I'm sure many people already know what I'm going to talk about for this point, because obviously they might actually bring us to uh, different dynamic scenes between uh, any kind of cutscenes or anything like that, so even then, uh, as a matter of fact, though, then yeah. 
Now, of course, if you remember from the, uh, Klonoa Daughter of Phantom Isle Let's Play that Piglet has already done it since about a month ago, you do realize about the fact that Piglet accidentally managed to able to fall down here, and then if you fell down here, then you have to restart for that particular section again. So that's not the case here this time around, because obviously, that, I already know how the actual layout is supposed to be. But it's all in Klonoa 2 Lunar Tease Fail, and especially noticeable with the Game Boy Advance uh, installment, which is Empire of Dreams. Well, it might be a little bit of a different uh, level design as far as I'm most likely aware of. So even then, I can assure you that we almost nearly towards the end of this level throughout the bat, because obviously we did that uh, pretty decent at it. So even then, though, hopefully we need to dodge as many of those enemies as, as we possibly could. And also, let's try and get this as a nice little aiming shot for this point here. And sure enough, we actually did manage to collect every single part of, uh, you know, the villagers and stuff from, you know, Vision 4-1. So even then, though, there's also a hidden area up the top there, but it might be pretty tricky in this version. Because I think Piglet's managed to able to did this on the PlayStation version, although I may be wrong. But even then, though, that's as far as I can most likely think of it for the time. So... So there we go, folks, that concludes vi uh, Vision 4-1, and surprisingly enough, I did manage to be able to beat this under 7 minutes or so, which, fundamentally though, this is easily one of the shortest levels of the game, because, well, specifically on the Wii version of the game, because if you know what you're doing, then you were able to actually just to classify for able to pass you for that part, so... But anywho though, let's just move on now to the forms of Vision 4-2, where we hopefully trying to able to actually get to, uh... The wind village as much as we could and next thing you notice is the fact that well obviously we need to get there in time of course it might not be because if you remember from the playstation version of klonoa daughter phantom Isle, the original version of the game then sure enough we're not going to make it during in time because obviously there might be an incoming attack or anything like that so even then though, that's besides the point Still, I really love this music though, it kind of reminds me of, like a Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door vibe, but except the fact that it's a platformer it, rather than the RPG game, so... Oh yeah, keep that in mind with the effects of the water momentum right there, especially noticeably if you come to the actual jumping and stuff. Well, you need to get used to that in this particular level, because if you really want to go after certain collectibles, most notably with uh, jewels, extra lives, and most importantly, the villagers themselves, well, sometimes the water uh, rapids were able to force you to able to push forward slightly, so even then, uh, that's besides the point. Yeah, this enemy right there, whatever he stands on, that Piglet uh, somehow mentioned about the uh, reference earlier during the likes of in the, uh, the Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle uh, Let's Play and stuff like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, whenever I see the actual uh, ball projectile, the one that has like a red uh, thing in the center, whilst every single surface of the ball was actually in orange. It does really reminds me of the Dragon Balls from the Dragon Ball series. Most notably with the original Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT, and especially noticeable with Dragon Ball Super. So, I haven't really watched upon the forms of, uh, uh, Dragon Ball Super for quite some time. I think the last time I've actually watched uh, Dragon Ball Super series was actually by the forms of the Future Trunks saga. So because of this though, the one with the have the one time that uh, you know they managed to come across into the forms of the evil version of Goku, which is usually known as uh, Black Goku, and he did manage to able to get himself his uh, cooler transformation, which is a Super Saiyan Rose, which. I can't really pronounce that uh, very well for this point, folks, because again, it's been such a quite a long time since I actually did manage to watch uh, Dragon Ball Super. I think last time I've actually watched that, it was actually, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it was actually at the very end of 2018 or something like that, most notably because of how it's airing on the English dub version of the, uh, the actual anime, so... Yeah, this is the part I was talking about. Yeah, it just looks like a Dragon Ball, but except the fact that that red thing right there does not shape like a star or something. So because of this though, it does remind me of that. So it's one a little bit of a, you know, just a little bit more specific touch to this though. But even then though, that's besides the point right there. So anyway, so let's grab this next uh, villager piece right there. So even then though, I'm pretty sure we've only got two more left. So, and hopefully though, we can able to actually get... A the insane amount of extra lives as much as we could, so just in case we could able to actually just, uh, well, just farm some more of those, um, extra lives as much as we could, so let's see what's in down here, because obviously there might be something in down here, though, so, 
And of course, this will be the final time we're going to be able to be exploring through uh, the Wind Village from now on, though, until whenever we get to the extra vision, and especially noticeable with some extra features of the, uh, specifically on the Wii version, which I'll show those off uh, during another one video, alongside with the forms of extra vision of any sorts, but even then, no, that's besides the point for that little specific details, so. But I digress though, so not much else to really talk about this at this point folks, it's, it's, apart from the fact that, well, today's day is the forms of the 26th of June, in this case in 2019, so we've only got about two or lesser, more, uh, lesser amount of days left until uh, Super Mario Maker 2 will finally make a car, uh, finally coming out on the actual other countries and stuff like that, which I'm still looking forward to it. Especially noticeable that I can able to finally able to play a Mario Maker game on the go. Well, apart from the fact that with the Super Mario Maker for the Nintendo 3DS does manage to count as well, but that was a uh, specifically a port to the Wii U game, but that's besides the point. And plus, it has like lesser amount of contents than the forms of how it does it on the Wii U version. Plus, with the forms of how the fact that well, they did manage to at least add something new to the table, which is specifically uh, the Super Mario Challenge mode. So yeah, you probably get the idea of what I'm gonna say about this here. So anyway, so let's go ahead and go through here, and uh, hopefully we can get another piece of the actual village uh, citizens and stuff like that. So. Again, not much else to really talk about this at this point, apart from the fact that we've already just got about two more days left until the, you know, the Super Mario Maker 2 now finally uh, coming out and during the likes of it. Not only for our country, but it's also the fact that it's coming to the other countries you know too. See, so then I'm really, really pumped for that specific part, and I almost died right there, so. Yeah, because now we need to be able to be very careful with those crumbling uh, bones and stuff, because if you stand on those for too long, then obviously you're going to have to, well, you have to restart for that particular section again. And I think, I think that uh, the checkpoint right there was actually was there on the Wii version, because unlike the PlayStation 1, the original version of the game, it just doesn't give us a checkpoint or anything.
And since we actually got ourselves the next boss fights coming up, such as the forms of the Pantalum, and here's the strategy for this boss fight is, is the fact that once you're able to grab the enemy as a projectile with the wind bullet, then you can able to actually, hopefully you can able to actually beat this boss a lot faster by simply able to attack those two weak spots, doesn't matter which spots you're going to be aiming for, that way you can able to damage this boss fight a lot faster. So, yeah, just like the PlayStation version, then you can simply just do that strategy, but that could be the same applies for this version here and there too. And I managed to deal with this boss fight without taking any damage whatsoever. So, yeah, it's a pretty swell, easy boss fight. So even then, let's check upon Grandpa. Hold on, Grandpa! Hold on! Klonoa? I'm sorry. I couldn't stop them from taking the pendant. Don't try to talk right now! It's too late for me. I know that. Did you talk to the chiefess? That's good. You're a brave boy. It seems the wheels of fate have begun to turn. We didn't have much time, but you made me very happy. My wonderful child of the wind. Grandpa! You must get the pendant back. Because, Klonoa, that is your... Grandpa! You gotta save your strength! It is your destiny. Grandpa! I'm so sorry this happened, Grandpa. Grandpa! Klonoa? We have to go after the pendant now. Yeah, but we know the Pendant is in the Temple of the Sun. How are we supposed to get there? Hey, look! What's that? Isn't she from Jugbot? Pamela! I didn't know she could fly. King Seedoff and the Chiefess of Forlock Forest told me everything that happened. Come, get up on my back. I'm still feel so sorry with uh, Klonoa, especially knows about that now he lost his grandpa because of the, you know, the massive laser of death by Joker and stuff, but even then though, I just felt so sad about that. But either way though, that concludes the forms of Vision 4-2, and it looks like we're now going to be exploring through the Temple of the Sun. In this case, to me though, probably one of the longest worlds of the game, just because, you know, I'll explain more details onto that until tomorrow, so... Yeah, I guess I'll end things off here, so join me next time on Let's Play Klonoa for the Nintendo Wii. It's the fact that we are moving on to Vision 5-1 and 5-2 beyond that. So see you guys next time. Later, fellas.